addressed with another person on uh, a, a all white guy thought on politics in general and on government specifically. In part one, I spoke briefly about uh, my observation that government will fail you, and I gave some examples. Uh, there's a couple of thoughts that I didn't finish and a couple of points I would like to follow up on. Uh, before I get into today's topic, which is trying to understand or explain why it is that the government continues to fail so miserably. Um, in the last session, in part one, I began to talk about Churchill, and I didn't finish my thought. Uh, what I meant to say was that Churchill famously said that uh, democracy was a pretty poor form of government, but it uh, was better than the alternative. And I believe that too. Um, the, the, the key issue is whether we can make democracy work better than it is. I also alluded to a, an MIT doctoral thesis by a gentleman on the state of the bridges in the country. And I now recall that gentleman's name. His name was Wien, W-E-I-N, Dr. Wien. You can probably go online and find his thesis uh, in the MIT archive. But uh, way back in the 80s, the bridges were a terrible place and uh, still are to the best of my knowledge. Let me also add a couple of additional examples of government failure. I talked to some of you about military failures. Uh, government fails miserably in the civic arena as well. Uh, you just have to look at the United States Post Office, USPS. Um, that is an institution that is failing before our eyes. And uh, another rather striking example is um, the uh, failure of Amtrak, which is a, a, a fine example of how government really can't run this country safely. Uh, I could go on and on talk about Social Security, which is headed for failure. Uh, unnecessarily in my opinion, but uh, there you have it, and so on. Just, just without beating a dead horse to death, let's ask ourselves the question of why this failure seems to be so, uh, so sim symptomatic or so evident in uh, governments, not only in the U.S., but around I've given some thought to this, and, and there are two explanations in my mind. One is lack of accountability. Uh, government does not have a profit and loss statement uh, as the enterprise in the private sector, so it's difficult for them or for an outsider to gauge how the organization is performing, and the, the um, members of government, the insiders, don't have uh, clear objectives or goals in their favor, uh, in con contrast to, uh, to people in the private sector. They, they, in most cases, just want to play it things safe, um, increase the size of their budget, and, uh, you know, avoid any negative publicity. Case of elected officials, they very much want to get their budget spread. That's part of the reason why government fails. There's no accountability, um, no clear goals and objectives. Uh, it's easy for them to flounder, uh, perform in a mediocre fashion without any uh, consequences. Uh, of course, most government employees cannot be fired. Uh, this leads me to my second uh, explanation. 
government organizations typically do not hire the best people. Working for the government is not typically very exciting or challenging. And uh, the best people end up in the private sector where their talent will be recognized and, re and rewarded. And at the same time, the flip side of that is they do not hire the worst people, as uh, happens in the private sector. So you end up with bureaucracies full of mediocre people, including some underperforming people who uh, are basically just uh, ready to, to flop out for retirement. So there is no real uh, uh, talent, uh, or if there is talent, it's not recruited by typically most government organizations. And on the other hand, uh, there's no consequences for mediocrity or, or poor performance. Uh, I guess there might be a third explanation, and that is um, government organizations are typically very large. And my experience in the private sector, having worked for some of the largest corporations in the world, including General Electric, which recently has been one of those uh, calling bells now, uh, it's very difficult. It's, it's uh, much more difficult to manage a, a huge organization than it is to manage a small mom and pop outfit. And a small mom and pop outfit, you know, the owner is there in contact with overseeing the efforts of employees every day. And uh, everybody knows what they're trying to achieve. And any kind of mediocrity or, or uh, failure is immediately evident and is immediately dealt with. In these very large organizations, uh, that's not the case. There are m multiple layers between people on the front line and, and the person at the top. They never see the person at the top. He could be thousands of miles away. Uh, they are basically lacking in motivation, uh, lacking in inspiration, and uh, lacking in empathy for most of what I've been through. Um, so there you have at least my uh, thoughts on why government seems to fail uh, repeatedly and miserably. Um, and in the next part, part two of this series, I will things around a bit and argue that government is nevertheless necessary. So that creates a co conundrum. We have these, we have a need for a government in any modern society, um, but along with that comes mediocrity, uh, failure, productivity and all of the other uh, aspects of, of uh, government that we're familiar with. Uh, and, and then that in turn raises the question of uh, wha what is the uh, solution? Is it just accept this and keep muddling forward, paying our taxes, uh, shaking our heads? Or is there some way we can perhaps um, have our cake and eat it uh, in terms of some reform that we can make that as, as citizens, as voters, as taxpayers, that will uh, uh, ameliorate, uh, if not solve, the, the, the problem. So that's it for today. Keep it short and have a government do better.